Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. I am continuing with pulling out the various threads of understanding and the various prophecies that give us further insight into the end times, further insight especially into what this Iron Kingdom that you can read more about in Daniel chapter 7 that you can find out more about in Revelation chapter 16 and 17. What is this iron kingdom like? Revelation chapter 13 as well. And so the purpose of prophecy is not only to allow God's people to hear his voice in these modern times, despite what many people continue to say. They are very wrong. God is very much alive. God is very much speaking to the church on an individual level, and he is certainly sp still speaking to his appointed messengers that he has trained and raised up in the earth to carry forth the word of truth as far as it can go. And so today's prophecy is, it's quite old. It's from February the 16th, 2020. And it is called a look ahead, a look ahead. So this prophecy is not one of the first types of dreams that I've had like that, but this one was so detailed. And because I've already mentioned it in quite a few of the recent videos, I definitely said that I would get around to making this one. And so it was showing about the smart homes of the future. And um, I was not happy with a lot of stuff in this dream because it's things that we had already started to see creep up into modern life already in the from about 2010 moving forward. And I personally don't like these things. So um, I was living in that world and these things were here. And so I had this dream on Sunday, the 16th of February, 2020. And it was just like all the other future dreams that I had. But in this one, it was very clear that I was living a double life. So I was living a double life in this dream. And when I say double life, I mean, um, at one time I would be one person and then at another time I would be another person. So in one of my lives, I had a job, I had a job and I was living in these, I have to explain this thing. Uh, just imagine something that is curvy, a building that is slightly curvy. So a building that has a slight curve and yet the building is not a large block. We build buildings, apartment buildings. Anyway, we build them in these wide box shapes. This building was extremely narrow and it curved like this. So it was only one apartment deep. That's the best I can put it. If you were looking at it from the front, you were looking at something almost like a honeycomb. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It was exactly like a honeycomb. You're looking at a honeycomb from the front and you can see all the different cells, all the different cells, and each cell can only hold one bee. So it's not gonna be one bee here and then the second apartment for the bee and the third apartment like you find in buildings. It's a curvy building and it all faced one way. So it was my building and then other people's buildings like that. We were living in a complex and these apartments were very comfortable and very nice. And I call them living, breathing, ergonomic sleep. So they were, they were definitely alive and I'll go more into that. But I had a job and I had this apartment, but I wasn't really making the full use of either the job or the apartment. Or maybe I was just being wise given the circumstances of the times that I was living in, but I definitely did not live full time at my house. And now that I have brought out, now that God has led me over the years into a deeper understanding of what the beast government will be like and what this new hunt down the dissenters, hunt down those who don't agree, communist Marxist life will be like, where I just shared in a recent prophecy, speaking about the rise of Kamala Harris, how I saw that in America, the government became so militarized and so murdering that they began to come to our houses and get people. Just a moment, please. So in that prophecy, God was showing me how the government started to come to people's houses. That was how they began. They began to come to the houses at night and take people who were on various lists, maybe a list as a previous gun owner, maybe a, a list as somebody who was persistently voting a certain way. They began to come to the houses and take individuals and also sometimes take entire families at night. And that was called midnight dread. 
They started it at night, but eventually it would wind up with them taking people off the street in broad daylight. And I said that many families made the decision to give themselves a better and a longer life expectancy. They made the decision to break up and the father would go with some children and the mother would go with some children and they would find different places to live. I also saw that a lot of people stopped sleeping at their houses and they also did not go to what is known as their last known location. Your last known location is they know your sister's houses. They know the house of all your siblings. They know where they live. They also know where your parents live. And so it was not wise to go and be known for sleeping in those places. So all these years ago, I saw that I was one of those people who did that. But I did not understand at the time why I did that. I just knew that I found it wiser and savvier to leave my house, sometimes even for a few weeks, and then I would come back to the house. And so it was so that I would not be easy to track. In one dream that I had, society was very well ordered, so everything was very neat and ergonomic. Like I was saying, I was living in this curvy house where we all had comfortable, smart homes. And then in another one, society was just like, turning law of the jungle-ish, very um, disorganized and very just whatever. So here are the two dreams. In the first dream, society was very neat and bougie. My apartment was very nice. It had lights in the floor. It had living lights in the ceiling. And what would happen is, as I walked into my apartment, it would light itself up in a very energy efficient way. So lights would come up in the floor. If I hadn't switched on the main lights, lights would come on in the floor to show me this is where you're putting your feet. And sometimes the lights would flick on exactly where I was. And then as I moved through the space, it would flick off behind me and the lights would flick on in front. So it was only just lit wherever I was to save and conserve energy. It was an upmarket apartment very clean and functional. And I could tell by looking around and by other aspects of the dream that I was living in a green society. So it was very much energy consumption. It was very much no pollution. It was very much don't throw trash in the street. Um, no noise pollution, not making noise and being a nuisance to your neighbors. Very well planned out and peaceful type of life. And it all all things that were in my living space, everything that they had designed for us was to give peace to the human being. So it was very big on what I'll just call Japanese Buddhist Zen. Everything is so that your blood pressure stays calm and everything is so that you stay um, relaxed and everything like that. And I've spoken that further on the end of this type of start is to actually start medicating people. They will, stop, they will stop allowing people to have too many emotions. They will stop allowing people to have um, so many thoughts. I spoke in a dream how I saw that they were medicating, microdosing people constantly in food with this very potent, potent psychedelic called ayahuasca. And that is just a sign of some of the things that they will do. They will be secretly sterilizing people through medication to make sure that we don't multiply in that perfect society and make it like how this world is. They're always talking now about overpopulation. So ironic because their children are not the problem. They haven't overpopulated the world with their children. It's the rest of everybody else who is crowding the space. And so they will do certain things to make sure that they maintain some kind of peaceful Zen, no blood pressure, no loud out outbursts, no anger, no road rage, no road rage. And one of the things that they will do is giving people either willing medication or finding some other way to be microdosing people to come to control them. And so I lived on the second floor of this curvy building and I know in the movie, I mean, look at me saying in the movie, I've written here, this dream felt and looked like a movie, by the way. All the units were exactly the same from the outside and there were tons of them. So in the dream, it panned out like this. And then I saw a lot of curvy buildings like boomerangs sitting on a very wide plane. So all of us could catch the sun. So the direction that the sun came from every single person, you know how you fight sometimes with this north facing apartment, everybody wants that. Well, there was no problem. We were all catching the maximum rays of sun every day. Now in the second dream, society was just shot to pieces. It was noisy. 
It was dirty. It was upsetting. There were strong elements of chaos. And one of the constant presences in the dream was the presence of these silent, black-clad cops who never said anything. And these people were always there, a, menace, a menacing presence. And the funny thing is that they never really engaged with citizens. These guys used to be around all the time. And now that I'm doing this dream all these years later, I realize that the bloodlust that is in these cops, the danger, these men are trained when they engage, somebody's going to bleed or die. That's the hyper level that their training is at. And so as a result of that, they do not move upon a crowd or move upon a person just for, you know, the normal provocation. You do something to a cop now, they're tasing you half your life away or shooting you. No, these ones, they don't escalate. Their presence is always there as a reminder who they are and what they are capable of. And so I saw that because they would not engage just at the drop of a hat, people used to have these wild celebrity death match wrestling matches in the open. You know the kind of thing that people usually do now underground, you have to have an underground party and you need to know the password to get in. And men are fighting bare knuckle with no rules. They fighting in, I think it's called cage fighting. People were doing that in the street. And so in the second dream, because my sleep was switching between these two dreams, just like, just like a movie, I put on a trench coat and I lifted up the collar and I made sure that the collar obscured a lot of my face because I was trying to avoid detection from cameras as I was walking in the street to where I was going. This is a highly monitored society. So this big brother thing that we have now, it will be at DEF CON 12 in those days. So I put up, I put up the trench collar to, to hide my identity as I was walking through the street and as I was passing this match, I couldn't believe that people were having this kind of thing in the streets. And I wanted to ask, what are they fighting for? But I decided, you know what? I know where I'm going and I know what I'm going to do when I get there. I don't want anyone to remember my face. I don't want anyone to say, hey, that girl did stop here. For instance, if my face ended up on the news later. So I didn't talk to anyone and I moved on and I was on my way to meet this very corrupt government official that my friend I do not know this woman in real life. I've never seen this person in my dream before. But a friend had told me, I can connect you to a man who can get done what you need, Celestial. And so um, let me continue the second dream because if I switch back and forth, it will be a bit confusing. I'm going to continue it the way it happened. And so at this point, I'm walking through the streets looking for this contact. And then the dream switches back to the first. And I found myself coming home after a few weeks away to my perfect smart house. And the first thing that I should tell you about this is that my house was able to recognize me at the door if I had wanted it to. The door handle knows people by skin in that world. And the door would light up when you touched it when you came home. The door handle was made of smooth, grayish white, luminous metal that would glow when it made a DNA match. So when no one's touching the door, it looks gray. The handle looks gray. When you touch it, it lights up and then it glows white when you are a DNA match. And so when you touch it, the door recognizes you and then it will swing open by itself. You open your door by bi biometric touch and then it says, welcome, so-and-so. But my door was not activated at my apartment and to make sure that I wouldn't make mistakes, I always wore gloves. Whenever I would touch my door, my door still had the option of a key. So at that time, there was still a key option. And I will pause here to point out certain things. I'm sure that in your day-to-day -day life, wherever you are, you have noticed that there have been major changes in some areas. But for now, you are still granted an option. Even if you have a subscription with a business, if you notice, a lot of businesses just decide to change the formula of something that they're selling you. You've been getting it for a while. They just make a decision to change the formula, usually for the worse. And then they will tell you, we're continuing the old formula for about six, six weeks. We're continuing the old formula for about three months. 
If you want to stock up on it, we're going to give you that option. But after that, we're transitioning to this new one, whether you like it or not. And that is what happened. My door still had a key at that time. And I remember being so grateful that I could still just use a key, turn the key and have it engage the lock and the door would open without me having to use the DNA match. And so I was coming home after a very long absence. I walk in and the house is lighting up, welcoming me. The floors are lighting up. The house is lighting up. And I glance in the kitchen and I can see that my talking fridge is trying to talk, but because I've switched off the voice option because I hate gadgets talking to me, because I switched it off, only the console was active. So I did not want the fridge telling me that I was low on milk. I did not want the fridge telling me that I had not bought fresh cheese or whatever, but it would still write it on the console. And so when I got home, I was seeing the milk is bad and you need bread written. And I ignored that and I look on the table and of course, I've spoken about this before. Somebody has sent me a gift. Somebody has sent me a gift and this living plastic was over the gift. So I, like I said, somebody had come into my home. The package was not outside. The package was sitting on the kitchen island and it was living, it was living plastic. And there was a message scrolling in red ink across the surface of the gift. And this is what that message said. Welcome home. We don't care how long you've been away. We're just glad you're back. So let's get cleaning. Assemble clean broom and we'll take care of the rest. This gift was a broom and a mop combo inside this living package. I could see it. It was some kind of living fiber that was moving as I was looking at it. Please listen. This is a broom. The message says, assemble the clean broom. That was the name of it. And the clean broom will take care of the rest. So the threads of the broom were off white and they were alternating and I saw them become very stiff for the broom option. And then they were wavy and soft, exactly like a new mop that you haven't used. And I was staring at the thing and I was thinking, first of all, what kind of fiber is it that can move by itself? And what kind of fiber is it that can know how to turn hard or soft by itself as it wants? And the handle of this bro broom was broken up into three metal pieces. So it was made of the exact metal that my door was made of. And what you were supposed to do is take piece one, screw it into piece two, screw it into piece three. And the minute you screwed it into the head of the mop, it would activate the mop and you holding on to that handle, it would pick up your DNA immediately to know this is now Celestial's broom. Why? Because Celestial is the DNA that has put the mop together. And so it would capture your DNA by touch and immediately send it to a larger system. So there was a giant computerized system that was constantly collating data from all of us, door handles, mop handles, whatever else that living stuff was used for. As if to say, Celestial just touched this living metal component. The time is this and that, that she touched it. She touched it at this physical location. That means that she can be found at this time. Imagine having tools in your house like that. Every time you would pick them up to do something with them, they are broadcasting, telegraphing information. She is at home right now, or she has not touched anything in this apartment in three weeks. That info was acting as a call tower, exactly as the cell phones do now. Time of record, latest location, sending off information somewhere else. And I was very angry because this was sent to me by a friend, a person that I do know in real life. And this kind of person knows that I hate these gadgety stuffs. And I was remembering thinking, I have to tell her to stop sending me these things because she knows that I hate them and that I will not use them. And so I just left the whole package untouched because I didn't even know if the plastic would do anything, but I later had a dream of that plastic. And yes, that plastic does record when the right owner touches it and opens the package. And it does record when a thief touches it and tries to steal. And so we go back to the second dream. I'm looking for this corrupt government official. I don't know this man, but I've been recommended to this man because I want to get a little more time to not comply with upgrading my identification. So now we're in the second dream, we're going into a time where the world is a little bit ugly and now it's about to start entering more and more into the beast. And what that means is you start to lose more and more options to opt 
out of things. So I was recommended by a lady that I don't know in real life, and she was fully compliant with the beast system. She had all her beast identification. She was fully lined up, but this woman was kind of liberal in her views, and she said she, she felt that laws exist, but then if these laws are not seen as just by the majority of the population, then they should not exist and people should have the right to decide if they actually want to go along with something or not. So she told me, for now, human beings can still bypass the computer. So maybe the computer wasn't as widespread as then. Maybe the computer didn't have complete overreach by then. What she said was, Celestial, I know a guy who can actually still have access to the system to put you in. What I wanted was this man to put me in as compliant, even though I was not. So um, this being what happened, this girl said, we're not in the belly of the beast yet. People can still override computers and he knows how to do it. So when I saw this man, I instantly didn't like him because I just don't like shady people. But at times you have to do what you need to do. So we were meeting at one of these street matches. We had come up to another street match and I was standing there and this man came and stood right by me. I guess he recognized me. Maybe we agreed how I would look or what I would be wearing. He came and stood right by me and he introduced himself staring at the match and I confirmed who I was staring at the match. And we were trying to act like we weren't talking at all. With my trench coat up, I just, we were just looking at the match and talking without appearing to talk. And I was telling him that I don't want to give certain extra things to the system. So I've spoken about how people will be having their palms scanned as the banking gets more and more invasive. And they will be telling us that they want saliva samples. You can go and watch the prophecy, read the prophecy actually, that is called designer banking. I'm just going to say it here. I saw that in the future, they not only want to scan the palm, but they also had something that I called the living wall. And the living wall seemed to be a wall of this clear plastic that they will have almost everywhere with this blue lighting inside. So I spoke that when you go banking and it's time to palm scan, a clear plastic podium will grow out of the ground with blue light inside it. So here's the podium and it will appear just like these clear plastic pulpits, but there will be some kind of brilliant, beautiful blue light inside. And whenever you see that blue light, whether it is around the edge of a smart door or wherever it is, it means that component is active. And then people will put their palms and scan. Well, there was a living wall in the bank for those who were signing up and hanging off the wall like fingers, let's just say a finger here, 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 were tons of stuff that look exactly like what people are putting in their mouth now to fix their teeth. I'm not saying don't fix, the, fix your teeth. I'm just saying that later when you see some of the stuff in the future, you will realize that all the stuff you're playing with now, such as putting a mold in your mouth and biting on it, and giving someone your dental imprint, guess what goes along with that? Your saliva. And there's a prophecy that I will put up soon. It's called Ancestry. And there was one important thing that I did not speak of in that prophecy and that God says, stop giving your DNA to these companies. Stop giving your DNA to Ancestry.com. Stop giving your DNA to 23andMe. Stop giving your DNA to people. He said you are giving your genetic material into the hands of whom you don't know. God is always diplomatic sometimes. And when God says that you're giving away prime real estate from your flesh to who you don't know, you don't need him to break it down that it's nobody positive. He said, stop giving away your DNA and genetic material. And so I saw that this living wall had fingers that came out that were dangling. And what you do is when you're signing up, you simply go and you take one of those molds, a plastic mold, you put it into your mouth and you bite on it. And it would take your upper and lower dental, and it would also have your saliva sample on it. The minute you took that thing out of your mouth, because it was plastic, but with blue light, so it was lit up blue, you bite it. The minute you took it out of your mouth, it would go and disappear back into the wall. And a new one would come out, a new fresh blob. It was like a tendril with a blob of something like plasticine like play-doh at the end so that a new person who wants to sign up who has given their palm imprint would then come put that blob in bite giving full dental 
full saliva and it goes back into that wall. And the Lord showed me in that dream that is called designer, designer finance. He was showing me my child. This is how they will take dental records. If you ever commit a crime by biting or violent crime and your dental records are there, it is this banking information, this overreach that will identify you. People won't even be bothering to go to the cops and say, oh, we want to identify this skeleton and all that. The bank will be able to hand over that kind of information. And so retina scans, they will want people to give their eye scan and things like that. And I was just not ready. I was just not ready and willing to level up. I wanted this man to exempt me and to make my identification look like I had complied when I had not. And so he said, sure. No problem. I can do that. And there were checks on my identity at the time. So checks on your identity means she has given us this. We have her address. We have her age. We have her, her, uh, this and that, but then no retina scan. And you know how it is when you haven't complied, you get these three green checks, but then you get about five X's. You don't have this and that. Well, I needed this guy to do that for me. And so, um, eventually I told him if you can, if you can help me that I log on to see my identity and it's all green, all green, then, uh, I'll pay you. And he said, sure, I have no problem getting payment from you later because I know the girl who recommended you and she, um, recommended you very highly that you will keep your word. And so, uh, that is just it. This is what God showed me. This is what, uh, the Lord showed me that it will be like in the future. And I think that I will add another dream here. This is a very old dream. This dream is, um, at least 10 years, 10 years old or seven, seven, eight years old, very old. And I've never published it. It's just a personal dream. But I, I dreamt once that I went out to a mall in the future with a friend. And at that time, I did not know that they had escalated identification. I did not know that they had escalated identification. And so when we walked in the mall, the strangest thing that I have ever seen happened. First of all, the mall was laced with scanners all the time. I don't know if they have that now, but the, the mall was laced with scanners that were clicking people, clicking people all the time. And then um, we were walking down, you know, just walking down one of the mall's hallways and a wall opened, a hole in the wall opened and this mechanical arm just swung out and it shot a red beam. It just shot a red beam into the air. And as we'd been walking, I'd been seeing the red beams. You know, malls have levels. And if it's a fancy mall, then it will have that central place where you can just look down at all the floors. So I'd been seeing a beam here, but I was thinking, what is that? And then right in front of us, this wall opened and this mechanical arm came out and shot a red beam. And without thinking, without even flinching, my friend pu pulled out some kind of booklet or some kind of identification card and the beam hit the card and written right there in the air in front of us, it said her name, it said her address, it said her job, it said her age, just like an interface right there for her to see. And I'm right next to her and I can just see all her personal information and I was amazed. I was intrigued. I'll just be honest. And so we're walking in the mall and we've done everything. And then we swing another corner and this wall opens up. And without thinking, I take out my identification and I put my identification in front of that beam. And the beam said my name and the beam said renegade and the beam said outlaw and the beam said wanted for about 10 crimes, none of which I have the skill or ability to commit. And the beam did not put my information in a green interface like that girl. My interface came out in a red interface, in a red console that had my name and had every kind of lie that you can think of. I mean, serious, you have to go to a special school to be able to commit this kind of uh, subterfuge and crimes. And it was like, eh, eh. And this girl was looking at me as if to say, oh, are you one of those people? And I, oh, I've never woken up from a dream regretting an impulse thing as I did. So I just thought I would add that dream there. I've never ever spoken of that dream until now that 
something came out of the wall. Just a, it looked like a little camera head. It came out of the wall and it just shot a beam and people would just casually identify themselves and the beam would hit the ID and then it would just make a little panel and you could just see name, age, job, location, this, that, I guess, good citizen. Well, mine did not go that way. It had me as a master criminal. So I give God thanks. This is the dream from February 16, 2020. It is called A Look Ahead and I will continue making these prophecies. God bless you. God bless all of you who are supporting me. Uh, if you have questions, just look underneath Look underneath the, the video in the description box, and the information is always there. And um, may the Lord receive, um, return your gifts to you. And until I see you again, God bless you, and goodbye.